Welcome to the Cinema Rag, where we celebrate the greatest and worst in Hollywood films and their most self-indulgent narcissist actors, directors, and producers. Here, we'll laud and malign Hollywood's seedier elements with levity and humor. They love cinema as much as anyone does, and they've been talking about it for over 30 years. Time to get trashy. Here's Gregory and May. Hello, everybody. This is Gregory. And this is May. And welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Rag. We hope you're doing well today. As is customary on Wednesdays, May and I are going to tackle a topic. And we're going to do five most egregious best actor wins that should not have won. And for me, this is kind of a follow-up to best picture winners that should not have won. And so not surprisingly, after Best Actor next Wednesday, we're going to have Best Actress winners. And if you're new to this feed, I definitely recommend you check back on the other Wednesday episodes that May and I have done. We've done two-part series on Brad Pitt's uh, filmography, three-part series on Tom Cruise. We've done two-part series on overrated actors, one through ten, where we each take turns stating who we think are overact uh, over overrated two-part series and underrated, and then we've done some actor versus actors, Affleck versus Damon, for example, Bale versus DiCaprio, Bullock versus Roberts. So today we're each going to give five actors that have won best actor between 1980 and 2010 who we think should not have won. I do not know May's choices. She does not know mine. Now, understandably, guys, we have not seen every movie that all these men have been nominated in. So for me in particular, I'm picking the five what I perceive to be most egregious choices, most egregious choices. And I'm assuming May is probably going to do something uh, similar to that. So, May, you go first. Ladies first. Who is your well name? Yeah, mine don't turn out to be uh, most egregious, I don't think, but more so just actors who I think deserved it more. So All right. I wouldn't say, say it's egregious. Okay. But my number five is Adrian Brody. Ah, okay, go and ahead. And it was a real career changer for him. He was very proud of it and deservedly so. But there were just four other great nominees that year, one being Nicolas Cage, an adaptation, who I think should have won. Uh, number two was Michael Caine. Uh, number three was Jack Nicholson in About Schmidt. And number four, Daniel Day-Lewis in Gangs of New York. So, you know, I think that Brody, you know, he's only won one Oscar since then. And I'm not saying that he's a bad actor. He's actually a very good actor. But I don't know if he necessarily deserved it that year. I do think Nicolas Cage deserved it for adaptation that year. Yeah, I think this is my number three, by the way. So I totally agree with you. Uh, this is probably the most famous for when he wanted. He kissed Halle Berry on stage. And, you know, it's a, it a great kind of scene in terms of like we're memories of an Academy Award, because uh, nowadays the Academy Awards, aside from the slap, have been pretty boring. I do agree. You know, Brody's career really hasn't done anything. He's on the TV show Succession. He had a little cameo. Uh, but really, he's irrelevant. And if you look at the other people, they're all just iconically good. I, as I've mentioned in the past, would probably have given this to Daniel Day-Lewis. Gangs of New York by Scorsese is a flawed movie, but he is just amazing. And then I would give it to Cage as number two, because I think he's great in adaptation. But yeah, Brody, absolutely. And time time tells you this. Brody should not have won this. I agree with you. Right. Yeah. And for some reason, yeah. I don't know the, the movie that Kane was in, but it was yeah. The Quiet American, which I have not Oh, heard. right, right. That's a good movie, too. Okay. But yeah, I really don't think Brody. I would have ranked him fifth. 
Scott of yeah. the five nominees. And this was a time where they were not giving Academy Award for Best Actors to young actors. So historically, they always give it to younger women for Best Actress, but normally with the actors, it's older guys who've established themselves. And Brody came really from nowhere at that point. And clearly, it was an ephemeral thing because he hasn't really done much. All right, my number five, we're going way back in time, 1981, Henry Fonda winning for On Golden Pond. Now, <laughs> his co-star, uh, Jane Fonda, might be mentioned in the overrated Best Actress winners, but we'll keep it to the men here. So who else is nominated this year? You got Warren Beatty, Mr. Lothario for Reds. He directed that. Burt right. Lancaster for Atlantic City, Dudley Moore for Arthur, and Paul Newman for Absence of Malice. So I've seen on Golden Pond fine movie this is one of those let's give it to the old man before he drops dead who do i think should have won this anyone but dudley moore i mean really i would have put fonda number four here i think Beatty's great in reds lancaster's great in atlantic city with susan sarandon and newman probably i would have give it to i'd probably give it to him if i had to pick somebody either he or Beatty. but henry fonda is doing nothing special in my humble opinion in that movie so i i don't think he should have yeah i agree and that was just sort of his posthumous oscar i believe or did was he still alive i think he died the year after maybe yes i think he died quickly soon after so they probably knew he was sick but i do think paul newman probably deserved it that year yeah i agree yeah absence of mouse is a great movie holds up really well deadly more arthur i mean come on yeah what's your number four well, this one is going to be a little controversial just because I know that Tom Hanks probably did deserve the Oscar for Philadelphia. But I really wanted Liam Neeson to win for Schindler's List that year and okay. even Lawrence Fishburne. All right, well, let's back it up because you're you're talking about different movies here. Are you talking about 93 Hanks where he wins it for Philadelphia? Right. Okay. And Liam Neeson, I think, should have won it that year for Schindler's List or Lawrence Fishburne. I think. Why don't you give the other choices? Because this is my number two. You're stealing yeah. all mine. <laughs> the other, okay. Well, the other choices are Anthony Hopkins and Daniel Day Lewis. So, Anthony so, Hopkins for Remains of the Day, Daniel Day Lewis for In the Name of the Father, Fishburne, What's Love Got to Do With It, and Liam Neeson for Schindler's List. Right. All right. So, what's your take why Hanks should not have won this? I because agree. I just, I, I really think uh, Hanks did a great job playing the AIDS, HIV positive patient. But I think Liam Neeson was just so gracious and loving as the, you know, as the as Schindler, as the Oscar Schindler. And he was very emotional in that one scene where he finds out all the people who who lived because of him. And, you know, I I don't know. I just think uh, Liam Neeson deserved it more that year. But my take is, well, I think the bigger egregious thing was when Hanks was nominated for Big five years before. I'm like, look, yeah. you and I, we, we, we've we talked about Hanks in the past. We don't have a Hanks retrospective yet, but we don't think he's that talented. And um, look, I think he's certainly better uh, for for honorable mentions, 94 Hanks getting it for Forrest Gump was on my oh. honorable mention. But for me, it's the most <laughs> egregious. In that year, there were choices, but I would not. Travolta and Pulp Fiction, and I mean Morgan Freeman for Shawshank, I think probably should have got this year, that year, 94. But 93, all these four other guys deserved it more than Hanks. Daniel Day Lewis is great in the name of the father. It was a small movie, Irish rebellion movie right burn is over the top amazing as he I is. Can. and he could have won he should have won and then anthony hopkins remains of the day that's the one where he and emma thompson are really stifled uh servants who are in love but they can't right. express it great movie very good performance and then neeson is great as oscar schindler so i mean this is yeah. one of those where like all the actors are just killing it and look, it's not like Hanks isn't good in it, but it's always no, Hanks, positive, and he's the worst one out of these. Yeah, and it's a Jonathan Demi movie, and so I think that kind of helped him a bit that year. 
I think what I think what helped him is that he didn't really do a lot of serious roles at this point. He's still Joe versus the volcano, Bachelor Party, League of Their Own, and this is his he first also, dramatic movie. He also movie. had a great co-star in Denzel Washington. Yes, he did yes. win for Best Supporting Actor that year, I believe. Absolutely. So we're in agreement. Oh. You you've poached my three and my two. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, my number four is. 1996, Jeffrey Rush, the Australian, he wins for Shine. Here are the other nominees. Cruise for Maguire. You already know where I'm going with this. Fine for English Patient. Woody Harrelson, People vs. Larry Flint, Billy Bob, and Slain Blade. Now, Rush is a good actor. You know, he, he's, he's at his moments. He was in the Elizabeth movies. He's, he's a good actor, okay? Shine was fine, completely unmemorable. And if you look at the other movies in here, I guarantee you more people have watched Maguire, English Patient, and even Sling Blade. And I would have given this to, to Cruz. I think this and Magnolia are the Cruz Oscar-winning portrayals. And he just runs the gamut of emotion. He's amazing in this movie. Yeah, I would have given it to him. If, if number wasn't Tom Cruise nominated for Best Supporting Actor, though. No, no, no. He's he's nominated for Best Actor in this one. He is? I thought yeah. he was nominated for Best Supporting. No, in, Mag in Magnolia, he's Best Supporting. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, Magnolia. Yeah, but I'm, talk but I'm talking about Jerry Maguire. This is Jerry Maguire. Oh, Jerry Maguire. Yeah, okay. yeah. okay. So I would have given, I would have been fine with, with Harrelson and People vs. Larry Flint. I don't think that's a good movie. Uh, but I would have been fine. I mean, the Sling Blade character Billy Bob does is iconic. You know, people always imitate it. But give it to him. Give it to Ray Fiennes, English patient at its moment. Fiennes is a top, top caliber actor. He's still yeah. packing heat if you saw The Menu, which came out last year. I mean, that movie is just crazy over the top where he plays a chef. I, I'm I would have... But definitely check it out. But this is Cruz's performance. This is Cruz's That year, I would have given it to Billy Bob. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Billy Bob's good. I, I, it's, it's just in that run of like playing special ed actors, like mm -hmm. special ed characters, like we saw with Rain Man and later on with I Am Sam and Forrest Gump. So I just don't think he's showing range as much. But you know, I movies I love. I have that ongoing series. Jerry Maguire clearly is is one of these movies that I love, and you know, so I'd give it to Cruz. But I'd be fine if if Billy Bob or Rafe find one. It. Okay. All right. Who's your number three? Oh, you my number three. Another one of mine. What was that? You're gonna poach another one of mine. No, I don't know. I don't know. We'll find but out. But I, I do like Ben King Ben Kingsley a lot as Gandhi in 1982, I believe. Yes. But I don't think compared to Peter O'Toole, Paul Newman, Jack Lemmon, and Dustin Hoffman, those are really fine fine actors as well mm. so i would actually have chosen peter o'toole or paul newman for, in in that year for the verdict so all right verdict is great you know the over he's the the over the hill attorney uh yeah that's a great movie i don't remember my favorite year i've seen it but it's been years so i can't comment on it hoffman tootsie you know i'm not a big oh. fan, fan so i'm always blocked Kind of like my for my dislike of him, and Jack Lemon missing. I have not seen that, so this one I really can't comment on. I have seen Gandhi, and I think he's great. I think Kingsley's great in it. He is, but you don't think you think Lemon should have won it, or no, or either Peter O'Toole for my favorite year or Paul Newman for the verdict. Dustin Hoffman, no, should not have been nominated for Tootsie, but Jack Lemon, yes, for missing. But, you know, that's just one of those things, again, where I don't think this is an egregious win for Kingsley. Yeah. But it's just one of those things where I think the other actors are better. So. Yeah, so for my criteria, I pick, you know, you go, you go through these 30 years and there's people who obviously deserve to win it, won it. And then there's those who won it. But then you look at the other contenders and we'll certainly talk about this with Best Actress because, you know, how I feel about Bullock and and Roberts winning their Academy Awards for their movies. But if you look at it was a weak year. So if it's if it's a year where the other performances are like, eh, they're like, okay, I'll give it to them. 
But the yeah. women I'm picking are just like so over the top. Like, how could you have picked these people? Like we talked about with um, with Adrian Brody and Jeffrey Rush and Tom right. and so forth. So this is one of those years, in my opinion, where I I think Kingsley's good, but I can see other people winning it. But to me, right. it's egregious because he's good as God. I mean, you don't even I, know that's Ben Kingsley. You know, and I think Peter O'Toole was only nominated one other time before he died. And I think that he really deserved an Oscar, but they never gave it to him. So, he didn't get it for Arabia? But, nope, he didn't get it. He's never wow. won the Oscar. So wow. That, for a that, lifetime that's, achievement. That's a, that's a travesty. That's a yeah, travesty. so that's why I just thought Peter O'Toole maybe should have gotten it. But, okay. Oh, wow. All right, my number two, you've already taken. So I've already done my five, Henry Fonda. No, my number four was Jeffrey Rush. My number three was Adrian Brody. My two was Hanks winning it over Fishburne and everybody else. So you, you, <laughs> this is going to be a short episode, so maybe we'll have time for honorable mentions here. My number yeah. one. My you're number gonna go one. You're going to your number one, and I haven't done my number two. Well, but you've, but you've, you're taking all of mine. Okay, how many more do you have left? Two more? Yeah, I have two more. Okay, do your do your second, and then we'll. Okay, go. my second one another. is Al Pacino for the sense of. Oh no, my God, you're taking all of mine. That was my number one. Because he really does this not year do a good is job. Terrible. He's he is mimicking somebody else. He's making fun of somebody else. I guess whatever you want to call it, but he give, does give not the act who, well. Give the nominees. Who else is? I mean, this is egregious. Uh, okay, this is egregious. Uh, Clint Eastwood, Unforgiven. Uh, Denzel Washington. Do you remember what film Denzel Washington was in? I mean, this to me is Denzel's best performance, most transformative, Malcolm X. Malcolm oh. X, right. Yes. Number three, Stephen Rea for Crying Game. Good movie. He's good. Number four, Robert Downey Jr. for Chaplin. Yeah. So, Yeah. I would have given it either to Denzel Washington or maybe Clint Eastwood, but not Al Pacino. Al Pacino deserved his Oscar back in the Godfather years. Yes. He deserved it for Dog Day Afternoon, but no, not this year. I mean, look, Send of a Woman, I've actually watched maybe about three, four months ago. And we, with 30 years of history now with this movie and how, there's like two Pacinos, right? There's 70s Pacinos, understated, just great dog day. I mean, he's not understated, but you think of Serpico, dog day. You think of Godfather. And then after Scarface, he transforms a little. But then certainly after Sin of a Woman, he's just a caricature of this character for the last 30 years of his life. I mean, he he goes a little understated again, like with The Irishman and some other movies. But look at Devil's Advocate six years later, Any Given Sunday. I mean, he's, he's it's good just, in Any Given Sunday, but he's also good in Heat. Okay, yes, yeah, he is. But, but, he, but they're all like what we like. If we have to do an impersonation of Pacino, we're rarely ever doing Godfather Pacino. We're always doing some iteration of Sen of a Woman Pacino, right? Who yeah. And all this. Yeah, well, that's just incredible. I can't believe that. He well, but, but this is why he doesn't deserve it. Like, if it was a weak yeah. year, maybe. But this is one of those, let's give it to the old man, because let's give it to him. Right. He wasn't that old. But let's give it to him, because he's amazing. But all the other guys, I, I would say Ray, I'd put number five. But Downey Jr. is amazing in Chaplin. I mean, he's young at this yeah. time. But he's amazing in that movie. Eastwood is, is good. Eastwood is good, too. You know, he's playing it kind of straight and narrow, typical, like, throwback to Clint from the Westerns. He, but he's great. And, I mean, Hackman's amazing in that movie. But this is Denzel. I mean, come on. Denzel is just, to me, it's like top five performances ever of the 1990s, Denzel and Malcolm X. And to give it to Pacino is just so egregious to me. Right. Right. Which is really a shame. And, you know, I think they instead gave it to Denzel for training day later, many years later, which is fine. Yeah. He's yeah. good in that, too. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, Malcolm X, how can you even question that that would be one of his weak performances? Because it's not. It's one of his best performances, you know. It's one of those, like, Pacino's iconic, the, you know, the iconic actor. Yeah. Let's give it to him. But uh, he he's, hasn't really excelled in anything in the last 30 years. 
Kind of like with De Niro, you know, De Niro became a caricature of himself maybe after Kate, Fe well, I was after probably Casino. And then, mm -hmm. you know, he's essentially just caricature. So, yeah. Okay. So that was my number one. So, yeah. Who is your uh, number my one? My number one is Tom Hanks as Forrest Gump. Okay. Well, that's and, good. yeah, that's... I do think John Travolta should have won it. Okay. Well, let's review Maybe here. Morgan so Freeman and Shawshank Redemption. Mm -hmm. And then there's Paul Newman and Nigel Hawthorne. So. No, I have not seen Newman and Nobody's Fool. I have seen Nigel Hawthorne and Madness of King George. Um, he was a good British actor. But yeah, to me, I didn't put in the top five because who, I don't think Hanks is good in this, but who is the clear winner in your eyes? It's Travolta eyes, or Freeman? It's either Morgan Freeman or John Travolta. But pick one. Who would you pick? And I would pick John Travolta just because it's such a different role. role yeah. Yeah. And he really does showcase himself in that movie full picture. So, but you know, Morgan Freeman is everybody's favorite, and that movie is everybody's favorite as well. <laughs> and, and as far as the all-time movie list, so yeah, Shawshank Redemption too. But it didn't win, uh, and he didn't win. So yeah, this this um, was a bad or this dump was... one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. And we had talked about an overrated Best Picture winner, so it's not surprising that we're going to bring it up here. thing about Freeman is that Freeman is great, but Freeman's playing Freeman, right? Freeman is Freeman, like the what, the sagacious black man. He plays that pretty much in every movie the last 30 years. Travolta, you know, I, you, you know, you and I have talked about it. I've been souring on Tarantino. I've done kind of my own retrospective on, on Tarantino's work, and I love Pulp Fiction. It's in my top three Tarantino I don't know. I mean, Travolta at the time, we were both in college at the time. So we like, we saw this movie. It's like, oh, this is amazing. But to me, who should be nominated from this movie? I don't think it's Travolta. It's Samuel L. Jackson. I think Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson, wasn't he nominated for Best Supporting Actor? Uh, maybe he was. Maybe he was. But maybe. He, uh, he's, he's just mesmerizing in this movie. I would take it over Travolta. Travolta kind of plays the stoner kind of just, you know, hot smoking guy. I, he's, he's fine in it, but oh my, man. I, when, when you think of this movie, to me, it's Samuel L. Jackson. And Samuel L. Jackson, to me, is more of a lead than Travolta. But given that Travolta had been, a you know, so a, an actor for 20 years, they made, you know, made him best actor. Yeah, really. I mean, but they I think, have pretty much the, not quite the same screen time, but I think Travolta does have a little bit more screen time, though. Mm. I think Sam Jackson is more memorable. Yeah. It's more oh. memorable. Than this. Uh, yeah, I do have a couple of honorable mentions. Um, yeah, we got. Um, let's do five minutes of it. Mine are mostly outside because there is a glaring one in in the twenty teens, and I don't think we'll do a best picture or best movie. I'm sorry, best actor of the twenty teens. But you go ahead, and I'll give my most. Well, agreed. you know, I love Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, as Capote in 2006. Yeah. But I love Heath Ledger's performance in Brokeback Mountain even more. It was just so sensitive, touching, everything about it. He's great. He should have been best actor in that year. And then there's Terrence Howard and Hessel and Flo, um, jo Joaquin Phoenix and Johnny Cash movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And David Strathlin. Um, who I can't even remember what. Good night and good luck is the is the uh, Clooney directorial movie that. Oh yeah. right, right. He so, plays yeah. Edward Al Moreau in it. But I really wanted Heath Ledger that year. And okay, he so, it, so okay, so here's my take. I think Philip Seymour Hoffman is is good with with the passing of his his, his death. I think he's going to be regarded if he's not already regarded as just one of the best, if not the best. Uh, character actor of our generation he really is and so to me it's like i i would like to have seen him win for something else but he's great in capote now ledger and broke back yeah he's he's amazing in that he's amazing yes. in that and i think joaquin phoenix is is really good in walk the line as well but you know how i feel about biography movies i just think that there should be a separate category when you were in a, in a <laughs> real right. life person but uh you know ledger versus hoffman i mean this is the competition between two guys who died from drug overdoses right so mm -hmm. um 
Yeah, I could see I could see an honorable mention there. I would probably go with Hoffman still over Ledger, but I can totally see where you're coming from. Yeah. yeah. My honorable mention is gonna like I said, it's outside of this bracket, but I saw it and to me it's just so egregious. To me, egregious. It's gonna be <laughs> 2013. Matthew, all right, all right, all right, winning for Dallas Buyers Club. Oh. And DiCaprio is there for Wolf of Wall Street, Chiwetel OG of four for 12 Years a Slave, Christian right. Bale for American Hustle, Bruce Dern for Nebraska. I've not seen Nebraska, but I've seen the other three. And to me, McConaughey, no, 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 yeah. no. I do think Edge of Four is really uh, a force to be reckoned with that year in 12 Years a Slave. Very yeah, and, and I mentioned to you, I recently saw this movie and I'd never seen it before. And I juxtapose it with Django Unchained. And I would rather watch 12 Years a Slave, even though it's brutal in some of its, it's scenes. It's more realistic. It's, yeah. it's better acted. It's more realistic. And it's just a better movie. It's just yeah, a better it movie. But to me, DiCaprio, you have to give that. This performance in Wall Street is his best performance, I would say, he's ever done. Probably this and Departed, in my opinion. Mm, Better I than Revenant. Say, no, I would say Departed and the Revenant were his best. Okay, well, we can disagree. But Wolf of Wall Street, he's amazing. And this is the amazing yeah. movie. Even, even Bale and Hustle. You know, I love, I, I love Hustle because everyone in it, J Law, my girl Amy Adams, Cooper, mm -hmm. they're just just packing heat. They're all throwing 100 miles an hour in this movie. And Bale's transformative. I think he does a great job. McConaughey, he does that. Let me lose a lot of weight and play the AIDS guy, and they give it to him. You know, I just well, don't... see, it's it's a Tom Hanks Philadelphia kind of right, movie. exactly, exactly. Um, so it's like no. I mean, I would have given this to three other actors before. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> All right, um, man. Great time it? as always. We don't I, have time for another one. Then. All right, you give me one more. One more. One more. Sean Penn for Milk. Okay, who should have won it? I think Mickey Rourke for The Wrestler should have won it. All right. All right. Uh, who were the other nominees that year? What was that? 2006? Brad Pitt. Six? Uh -huh. Brad Pitt, Richard uh... Jenkins. Jenkins, Franklin, Ella, yeah. For Frost Nixon. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah eh, I don't know. Eh. I, look, I think Sean Penn's very talented, especially 80s Penn. Yeah, he is. Well, he's the, the, uh, the gay mayor of San Francisco gets assassinated, right, in Milk? Yeah. Right. I have not seen that movie, to be fair. I have seen Frost Nixon, and I've seen Benjamin Button. I've not seen The Wrestler, so I'll I'll defer to you on this one. I, I think this is a weak year, to be honest, uh, but I've, I've only seen three of these performances. Mickey so. Rourke really gave gave it his all that year. <laughs> yeah, Rourke, <laughs> 80, 80s Rourke was great. Great actor. Yeah, but that's it for Rourke, I think. I don't yeah. think he'll be coming back. Well, he had a troubled past, you know, troubled, yeah. troubled issues. All right, man, I appreciate it. You stole all mine. We'll see if in Best Actress you're going to steal mine again. Oh, all right. You take care. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to The Cinema Rag. Please post an honest review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the episode notes to visit our website and to make a donation. Lastly, follow the rag today. Until next time.